Hi friends, recently on my channel published an interesting video in which I spoke about the protection boards of lithium-ion batteries, why they are needed, how they work and other interesting details. I have accumulated a lot of protection boards from mobile phone batteries. A protection system was needed for one of my projects in which a lithium-ion battery was used. Friends, I strongly recommend watching the first part of this video to understand what is it about. You will find the link in the description. The problem is that these boards are designed for a maximum current of 1 ampere, but I needed a board with a current of at least 6 to 7 amperes and more. Boards with a big current which are necessary for my purposes cost less than half a dollar. Links to them can be found in the description, but I couldn't wait for a month or two. A more detailed examination of the modules at AliExpress made it clear that these boards aren't really much different from mine. Circuit is the same, only the protection current is larger. A larger current is generated by the parallel connection of power transistors. Here is the original circuit, and this is our powerful circuit. In the first part of this video, I explained that the chip DW01, which is the brain of these boards and controls all processes, monitors the voltage drop across the transistors. If the drop is too large, the chip closes one of the transistors and cuts off the load from the battery. It is the protection system by current. If the FEDs are connected in parallel, the resistance of their channel is much smaller by the Ohm's law. At lower resistance, the voltage drop is smaller, so the protection tripping will be at greater value of current. Well, naturally parallel connection of the FEDs will make it possible to switch large currents. The more transistors, the greater total switching current. Now it remains to realize the idea. This took me a long time. I had to manually draw some components in size according to data sheets, because in my fairly extensive library of macros, the necessary components weren't found. But in the end, the board turned out to be rather compact. The thickness of some contacts is only half a millimeter. The finished board shows that such a task is difficult for the laser ion technology of creating printed circuit boards. In order not to bother with homemade PCB technologies, I advise the service of GLCPCB. This is the leading company, more precisely the factory, which manufactures printed circuit boards of any complexity, sizes and shapes for your files of Gerber format. There is free shipping at the first order, and most importantly, the prices start from $2 for 10 pieces. A link to GLCPCB can be found in the description. Field effect transistors are standard assemblies of two FEDs in the same housing. They are often used on smartphone battery protection boards and not only. In my case it is 2805A. Such assemblies have a lot of analogues. The basic parameters are now in front of you. A total of five assemblies are used. The DW01 control chip also has many analogues. As this component produces a lot of companies, the name can be different. Now the board is ready, let's test it. In the first video I mentioned and now I remind that this board protects the battery from a deep discharge, from overcharging and from overcurrent or short circuit. First, let's check the protection against overcharging. The final voltage for one can of lithium-ion battery is around 4.2 volts. The controller must disconnect the battery from the charger if the voltage is greater than this value. I connect the battery to the protection system. On the laboratory power supply I set about 4.5 volts. The current is limited to 380 milliamperes. For such type of a battery it is possible up to 1 ampere. After some time the protection circuit disconnected the battery. Further charge stopped. Even if we increase the voltage on the laboratory power supply, the situation will not change. The actual value on the battery is slightly more than 4.1 volts, so everything goes well. Now let's check protection from deep discharge. Here, as a battery, I connected the laboratory power supply and multimeter is connected to the output of the circuit. Decreasing the voltage on the power supply, I imitate the discharge of the battery. We can see that the multimeter reading fell to almost zero at a voltage of about 2.5 volts. Thus, the protection is worked. Frankly speaking, this voltage is less than critical and it may have a bad effect on the battery, but since the controller decided that it's safe, just let's agree. The most important is the value of current at which the protection will work. To test this, I took the electronic load. That is very cool model. The link will be found in the description. 
This model allows you to load the battery with a maximum current of 10 amperes. And as we see, protection didn't work for current up to 10 amperes. Next, I took Nichrom Spiral as a passive load. Gradually reducing the load resistance, it became clear that the protection was triggered at currents of about 12 to 13 amperes. Just that I needed. Lithium-ion batteries have a small self-discharge, but a battery supplemented with such a board will discharge faster than a battery without protection. The current that consumes the protection circuit is majorly. It is about 2.5 microampere in my case. Well, friends, I remind you that in the description you can find a link to a complete RCAP with a printed circuit board and also links to the protection systems for a variety of purposes. Don't forget to subscribe to my group in Facebook. The link is under the description. Please don't forget to rate this video as your favorite if it was useful and share with your friends. Now I say goodbye until new meetings with you was Kassian TV.